In this lesson, we will contrast greatest common divisor versus least common multiple. This is a skill that we need for when dealing with fractions, reducing fractions, or finding the lowest common denominator when adding and subtracting fractions. Okay? Now, let's take a little look here. The greatest common divisor means greatest means biggest. What's the biggest number that can be divided into 16 and 24? Okay? Well, 2 can be divided into them, and so can 4. But 8 is the greatest common divisor. Common means it can go into both. All right? Um, and so when we reduce, we get 2 thirds. Whereas least common multiple, common is going to mean, one. once again, we have two numbers. Multiple is going to be, what is the number that is bigger than both of these, but is the smallest, okay? And I know that sounds tricky. Uh, 3 and 5 can both go into 45, but they can also go into a much lower number, 15. 3 times 5 is 15, 5 times 3 is 15. Now, there are many numbers that 3 and 5 can go into that are bigger than 15. 15 is the least uh, of those numbers. And notice how the least common multiple, it's bigger than 5 and 3. Whereas the greatest common divisor, those numbers are smaller. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. That number is smaller than these two. Okay? All right. Let's look at 15 and 45. Uh, let's see. 3 goes into those. So does 5. But 15 is the greatest common divisor. And if, if 15 goes into those two, uh, we get 1 third. Now, if we go over here, 9 times 12 is 108. But is that the smallest number? Is that the least common multiple that these two can be divided into? Okay. Now I'm going to show us a little trick. If the smallest one does not directly go into the biggest one, if 9 cannot go into 12, watch this trick. Double the 12, and we get 24. Now, can 9 go into 24? No. So then we triple the big number. What's 12 times 3? 36. Can 9 go into 36? Yes. 36 is the least common denominator of 9 and 12. That was a nice trick. Now we get 27 and 81. Well, we go, well, 9 can go into those. So 9 would be the greatest common divisor, or at least we think. But when we reduce these, ah, we, we get um, 3 over 9. Oops, we can reduce that further by 3, and we get 1 third. So the greatest common divisor is you take those two numbers we reduce by, multiply them together, ah, 27 can go into this and into that is the greatest common divisor. Now, here the denominators are 2 and 4. The first question I always ask myself, can 2, the small one, go into the big one 4? If the answer is yes, guess what? The least common multiple is 4. But that only works when the smaller number can be divided evenly into the bit bigger number. Okay, 8 over 14. 2 is the greatest common divisor. Some people might say, well, 4, four can go into 8, but 4 can't go into 14. 4, no. Okay? Uh, 8 and 10. 
Now let's ask ourselves, can 8 go into 10? No. So we multiply 10 times 2. Can 8 go into 20? No. Multiply by 3. Can 8 go into 30? No. Multiply by 4. Can 8 go into 40? Yes. 40 is the lowest common denominator. Okay? All right. Greatest common divisor. Now, I wish the book would just worry about reducing numbers like this, but they always do some dopey thing that is separate from fractions. I don't know why they do that. Okay? But basically, when you have two numbers horizontal, it's supposed to be just like this. Okay? How would you reduce 14 and 20? What's the biggest number that would go into them? 2. Just like if we reduce 14 over 20, we'd get 7 over 10. Same thing here. What's the biggest number that goes into both of those evenly? 7. And here, oh, it's 7. But if we really check, 7 goes into 14, 2. 7 goes into 42, 6. We can reduce that by a further 2 each, and we get 1 third. Now, when we go like that and multiply and we get 14, 14 goes into 14 once, and 14 goes into 42 three times. Okay? Huh. 18 and 18? Whoa. 18 goes into both of those. That's the biggest number that can go into both. But what about 18 and 21? Three's the biggest number there. What about 18 and 24? Two can go into them, so can three, but six is the biggest. How about 18 and 45? Three can go into them, but nine is the biggest. How about 18 and 90? Nine can go into them, but so can 18. 18 is the greatest common divisor. Okay, and once again, the book wants you to do it like this. All right? And so you just have to pretend that these are fractions that need to be reduced. Okay. Let's see if we can do this. What's the biggest number that goes into 6 and 12? 6. The biggest number that goes into 8 and 12? Is it 2? No, it's 4. 4 goes into both of those. How about 12 and 36? Well, 2 goes into them. 3 does. 6 does. But it's 12. One dozen, three dozen. And 36 and 42. Two goes into them, three goes into them. Six is the biggest number. Some people might say 12, but 12 does not go into 42 evenly. So the answer is six. Okay? Now let's quickly go over least common multiple. Four and five. What is the smallest number that 4 and 5 go into? They both can go into 100. They both can go into 80, but it's 20 that they go into. Now, how, how do we do that? You take the biggest number, and then you ask, can the little number go into the bigger? No, not evenly. Then times it by 2. Can 4 go into 10? No. Times it by 3. What's 5 times 3? 15. Can 4 go into that? No. Then we go four times. Uh, then, then we go five times four is twenty. Can four go into twenty? Yes, twenty is the lowest common mul multiple. And really, what we're dealing with here is lowest common denominator. So we ask ourselves, what is the smallest number that both numbers can be divided evenly into? Okay. So 8 and 12. Now the book is going to list it like this. What's the smallest number both of those can be divided into? Okay. So uh, can 8 go into 12 evenly? No. So multiply 12 times 2. Can 8 go into 24? Yes. There it is. LCM or lowest common denominator. Okay. Least common multiple or lowest common denominator. They're both basically the same thing. What is, what's the smallest number that both of those can go into? Well, they can both go into 36, but they can both go into 18. That's just a little bit tricky. Even though it's simple, it's tricky. 
Okay. Now 8 and 10. Can 8 go into 10? No. Multiply by 2. Can 8 go into 20? No. Can 8 go into 30? No. Can 8 go into 40? Yes. 4 and 5. Okay, just like what we did right up here. They both can go into 20. And 6 and 8. Uh, can 6 go into 8? No, so we multiply by 2. Can 6 go into 16? No. Can 6 go into 8 times 3 is 24? Yes. 6 and 8 both go into 24. 10 and 12. Can 10 go into 12? No. So multiply by 2, by 3, by 4? No. Then when we go 12 times 5, we get 60. 10 and 12 both go into 60. 15 into 20. Can 15 go into 20 evenly? No. Multiply it by 2 is 40. No. Multiply it by 3 is 60. Can 15 go into 60? Yes. So can 20, 60 is the answer. Our last three. Uh, these are both prime, so you just multiply them together and get 6. <laughs> 9 and 12. Can 9 go into 12? No. Multiply by 2. Can 9 go into 24? No. Multiply by 3. 36. Can 9 go into 36? Yes. Can 6 go into 10? No. How about 10 times 2? 20. No. How about 10 times 3? 30. Yes. And there we have it. Thank you.